welcome to Drink of Thrones, the show where we discuss everything Thrones. And of course, we drink while doing it. And I am Louie and I'm here with Jasmine. All right, Jasmine. So before we get into the third episode, uh, the second of his name, let's play our quick game uh, to maybe get the, the mood started. It's a drinking game. It's called Game of Trivia. Okay. okay. Same as last week. Um, if you get the majority of right, you win. I will take a shot. If you get the majority of them wrong, you win, and I will take a shot. Okay. Sounds fair. Okay. So, some of these, uh, not co- it, it was just coincidence, I, I will say. You're wearing a Boys in the Hood shirt, and I am wearing a Nirvana shirt. And some of these, before we knew what you, we were going to be wearing or whatever, uh, are 90s related. Oh, okay. Kind of. And you'll you'll hear. Another coincidence. I was born in the 90s. Whoa. I know, right? Scary. Here we go. Okay. Game of Thrones won a total of 59 Emmys. Name one of the music artists that died in the tragic airplane accident in 1959. Uh, Buddy Holly. Good job. Woo! All right. Renly Baratheon got murdered by a shadow conjured by Melisandre. Which Disney character is known for chasing the shadow? Oh, for chasing the shadow? Yes. For chasing the shadow. His shadow. Is, but whose shadow are you asking me? His shadow. He Ren- chases his shadow. He's Ren- trying to catch it. Eh, wrong. I'm like, you're not talking... <laughs> I thought you were talking about which shadow. I was like, Renly's ghost? No, we'll talk about that later. Okay. Uh, I probably should not throw in the card. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Targaryens are fam- famously known for having the abilities to fly dragons. And which is the next Chinese year of the dragon? A, multiple choice. Okay. 2023. All right. B, 2024. Or C, 2025. 2025. Eh. 20 was 24, huh? Yes. Damn it. Okay. Uh, Stannis worships the Lord of Light. What object can break up white light into different colors? What object can... I'll repeat the question if you like. Okay. Yes, please. Uh, what object can break up white light into colors? A um, glass? Eh, prism, kind of, yeah, but okay. no. Come okay. Come on. All right. Uh, Oprin Martell's nickname is the Red Viper. Name the actor who owned the Viper Room, a famous bar uh, that young people, um, young famous people used to frequent in the 1990s. Who opened it? Who owned it in that time, at that time. Who owned it? It wasn't Johnny Depp, right? What's your answer? I'm going to say Johnny Depp. I know it's wrong. Correct. Oh, man. Oh, oh. Whoa. Okay. Uh, and I should have done an odd. I did six questions, but you have three wrong and two right. This one, if you get it, it's 3-3. Three, three. I think we should both take breaker. a shot. No, well, it's an even number. I fucked up. I should have done an odd. But, oh. All right. Here we go. Theon Greyjoy. Another 90s one. Theon Greyjoy. Uh, his uh, Theon Greyjoy's penis was cut by Ramsay Bolton. In the 1990s, this person became famous for cutting her husband's penis. What is her name? A Babbitt. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember her first name. Something uh, ba- Babbitt or Bobbitt? <laughs> Baba Duke? Okay, no. fuck it. it uh, Babbitt, it, it's Bobbitt. You have to okay, write Okay, I said it. I but, th- yeah. We'll both take a shot. You did somewhat okay. I did okay. Okay, you did okay. Don't get mad. Uh, take no, it easy. I'm just saying. But her name is first name. A Bobbit. I don't know something. Bobbit. Bo- Babbit. It's it's Bobbit Babbit. <laughs> it was Bobbit Babbit. Yeah, that. Would be- Lorena. Uh, Lorena Bobbit. Yeah, I like saw the documentary that they have on Amazon. In my I haven't head. seen that. I can't. You know. Uh, but anyways. Uh, you lost, but we both will take a shot just for. Uh, did I really lose? Yeah, you did. Is it because you were sabotaging me with that number no, of questions? No. Also, if, if we count the last one as correct, then it was three three. The last one was correct. 
I said it. Pre- I said it like right after. I think you should give me credit for that. <sighs> but you said bad bit. Okay, well, haters gonna hate. That's know, something not, else I'm not from hating. the nineties. Okay, here we go. We'll both take a shot. Yeah, because you sabotaged the question. I did not. Okay, let okay. us know in the comments down below if you sabotage the questions, <laughs> or let us know in the comments in general on the podcast, please. The yeah. answer is yes. By the way, if anybody's looking for a, an easy type. You guys let me know if I should count Babbitt. As... Then I said Bobbit. I said Babbitt. Bobbitt. <laughs> that was pretty close. Okay, here we go. Okay, I learned from last week. And the and I which Disney lines. character is, uh, is, is known for chasing his shadow was Peter Pan. I didn't hear Disney character. Okay, here we go. Cheers. Boom. Oh, what is it? Tequila? It's always tequila. Okay, it's what we have at the house. But I learned from last week. Yeah. And I um, I got limes this time. Okay, let's get into it. Third episode of House of Dragons, season one. Second of his name. All right. All right, let's talk about the intro scene. Very epic, I think. You can kind of, we get a glance. Uh, a glance at uh, the war that's been going on at the stepsons, right? Oh yeah. <clears throat> we see the prince. What's his name? The crab feeder. J- uh, it like ex- escapes me. Prince Ill. I'm uh. gonna. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like him. I like his look. I mean, I don't want to like kiss the guy or anything. I but... was. You know what's crazy? I was thinking in my head. I'm like, ah, just to kiss his little bald head. Ugh. I would just like. Gross. Um, <laughs> I got goosebumps just like it. it just, anyways, uh, we see him. I never hear him speak. No, he never speaks. No, he never speaks. He does have some sort of grayscale going on. Uh, right? Yeah, a little grayscale, a little eczema. You yeah, know. yeah. He, he has a... Uh, <laughs> needs a little lotion. Psoriasis, something. Something <laughs> yeah. like that he yeah, has yeah. for sure. You can think it a skin condition. He has But it. it's definitely grayscale. Yes. And... We we see him, and and he's nailing somebody to to like a wooden post again. It's his move. It's a classic move. Yeah. How you else are you gonna get him to stay in place? <laughs> yeah. Good move. <laughs> uh, and then then we hear a dragon, and uh, of course, after the noise of the dragon, we see the dragon followed by flames of the dragon, and and then it just takes you back right to. To kind of where the other one left off. Well, also, I mean, I think it's important to mention that that the guy that they're nailing to like the post, he's begging out for Damon, right? So, mm-hmm. so I mean, he's begging for a savior, and he sees Damon, and he comes in, right, like White Knight, <laughs> but on his dragon. Uh, uh, so at that point, he gets he gets like pummeled by the dragon. He's saved. To an extent, right? He gets put out of his misery, I guess. But also, he didn't have to die. But not in the... Well, that's the thing, right? Not in the way that he thought. But I think that is kind of telling of Damon's character where to some people, maybe he is a savior or somebody or a ruler that will at least come in and, and be a Trample stronger you ruler. To death. <laughs> will be a str- <laughs> stronger ruler than the one we have. But maybe it's not in the way... That they thought, right? Mm, I see. Because even be careful what you wish for is what you're saying. Well, even with the, I I think he's so uncertain, or they're uncertain mm-hmm. of everything. But of his, I think there's hesitancy to put him next in air. If he if he was automatically a, the right leader for the job, yeah. he would have had it. Rhaenyra wouldn't even have even been in the running, right? Because she's not necessarily a desirable option. Um, yeah. So I just think it's a a little telling of how people are feeling. Towards him because yeah. even uh, going later on into the into where they are at the stepstones, there is a little bit of uncertainty and turmoil within the camp that yes. he's assisting. So I think that's just a little telling. Um, but yeah, we get to see a little bit of of kind of the chaos and on the battlefield that. And then war. he gets he gets hit. He's getting his he, like he's a tough guy. I mean, he's one tough cookie, right? He's getting hit, and then but then he flies off, and then. Um, then we see, then we go, then the scene after that is straight into Baby Aegon's uh, namesay day. They, his a, na- a second second birthday. His name's day. Name's they call day. It. Whatever. And he, gorgeous Targaryen baby. 
uh, just classic, yeah. right? <laughs> white, white silver hair. No eyebrows. <laughs> no eyebrows. And um, yeah, and he looks healthy, right? He doesn't. He- yeah, I mean, definitely looks healthy. Uh, there's a comment made later on too about how, which we'll get into a little later, but. I mean, Allison makes um, she makes a comment about how it was birthing the baby wasn't so bad that it was fairly easy. He came right out, which yeah. which in comparison to you know, Ama, um, right? Yes, that was not the same case. So I mean, we can, we'll get into it a little bit later, yeah. but there was definitely a throwback to that. I but think. in that in that cel- uh, in that party, I guess we hear a familiar. Uh, name the Lannisters. Oh yeah. All right. So the the here I forget to. Uh, uh, anyways, the Lannister guy is telling is pleading with the king to please. Now is the time to act. Uh, the they're losing the battle. It's not necessarily them, but it is uh, people from Westeros losing a battle to these pirates that are probably being backed by the free cities, and it doesn't look good for the realm. And now they're pleading with him to act because it needs to. That he needs to do something. And once again, very indecisive. He doesn't even want to hear about it. I'm here to party about my kid. It's like there's no talking sense to him when it comes down to that. He's, um, anyways. I, that's how I felt. Uh, once again, him showing uh, there's no assertiveness to his ruling. Yeah, I think. Um... I think you're right. We get a little bit of an insight at at the names day celebration to where he's just happy he has a son, right? He's always wanted it. Yeah. He's always wanted to have that son, and he doesn't want to focus on the negative. They talk to him about what's happening at the Stepstones. Yeah. And I think it's because anytime there's something related to Damon, right? Mm -hmm. Anytime there's, he doesn't want to deal with it because I don't think he knows how to. So he's like, you know, that can wait three days. It's been going on for three years. I don't want to deal with it right now. Let's just celebrate today. And he's just more concerned where with finding Rhaenyra. Where is she? She's not here. And, you know, Seven Hells, where is she? Right? So then um, I don't know. I think, I don't know if he sends Allison, right? But she knows. She t- essentially, she, they were best friends. Right? So she kind of knows where she liked to 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 go and think or maybe vent or whatever. Some A cathartic place for her. And that's the gods, uh, Godwoods. Um, yeah, but even before we get into that, just one quick, uh, just one quick thing I I want to discuss is just where Otto also has like a side conversation with somebody. I don't re- re- quite recall who that person is, but he's somebody at the celebration, and they're kind of discussing how um, they just give you a quick insight into yeah. everybody. Like everybody's kind of expecting Aegon to be the next yeah he's a boy in line right there's all these you're getting a little bit of the politics of what's happening at the stepstone yeah. and what what people think about about um Viserys is, and what's going on right now and his yeah. handling and then you also get like well now that we have the new baby like we're gonna have a new heir right and that was like I don't know yeah but and then after that we kind of get into that whole rage about Rhaenyra and where she at and then you're right it goes into the godswood but it's important to mention that because that is the the it's it's the view it's how everybody sees things right this is a man's world boys rule girls drool we all know that she's yeah. not really going to be the queen right now now we have a boy which is kind of fucked up but uh that's obviously going to create conflict in the future and already kind of started yeah. So, um, and through these little side conversations, we kind of get an inkling of how people are feeling, right? Yeah, that sucks, man. And I think I think Rhaenyra would be a good ruler so far. I haven't seen anything that. Well, oh. I think that's it, it. Goes. I mean, going back to Allison and yeah. Rhaenyra and their conversations, Allison believes that as well. It's like she's a proponent for that, but obviously Otto kind of has control over her. Yeah. At this point, so. We get into that, and then we kind of see where their relationship is at this point, right? While she's yeah. pregnant with another baby. Yeah, and we see them interact again uh, at the by the tree at the God Godswood um, section or tree or whatever it is. And they this is I thought it was <laughs> like a really section at the grocery store, the yeah. Godswood section. Yeah, aisle four. Yeah. Uh, 
No, the, we, poor guy here. This is so funny oh, to me. Oh, yeah, the bard. The, the guy is, she came with the ships and she, whatever the fuck he was singing. And, and then he has to start over. And then he has to listen to one, the princess and the queen. And then, like, but I will say, when that how awkward was that, that little scene, I was like, that's the equivalent of a new song being out on the radio and you're putting that on repeat. No, oh, except like there's no technology. <laughs> so you're just like, Siri, play Cold Heart by Dua Lipa oh, on God. repeat. <laughs> Which one? Okay. So if you were the guy and you're like, would you like to hear another song, milady? Or whatever. Yeah. And it's like, may I suggest this one? And which one would you play? Right now, probably Dragula by Rob Zombie. But oh, man. Only because. <laughs> so they'd be like. Doo, doo, doo. Only because the spooky season's coming up. So I'm getting into that. But. Okay. But yeah. And then I'd probably be want to like piss my parents off. So. No. Uh, listening to something pretty metal. So. Okay. Uh, anyway. So poor guy. <laughs> I felt really bad for him. And then we have them interact, right? Uh, obviously, the friendship, it's been a few years now, maybe a couple of years, and that shit, it, there's no signs of it being mended or anything like that. And she, the queen now, Alicent, which flexed the queen muscle a little. Yeah, there's definitely some power struggling going on. And I think it's, it's a, I mean, it's a big point that she's not even at her brother's name day celebration yeah she's not even there she's not interested she's like yeah i know she's like hey your dad wants you there and she's like well i know you guys are like this thing yeah. is going on i know that's going on why do you think i'm listening to music and reading like <laughs> i made my choice yeah. you know and also allison is still i it's fucked up but allison it does appear to be genuinely sad she's torn about this she, but at the end of the day, it's like, what are you going to do? Like, you started fucking your best friend's dad. And that's why I don't think she pushes it too much. Yeah, she, she kind of was like, I think the only way at this point was to exercise her power to have her listen to her at all. Right. Yeah. So I think she knows she fucked up. She can't really tell her much. I don't think she really does. Yeah. So, you know, I think she, Rhaenyra lets her know, okay, well, my dad said so. I have to obey my king. That's pretty much the only reason I'm going to do it. And mm -hmm. she dips. But Allison's still like, well, I, I this doesn't have to be this way. It cuts well, her off. That, I, I think that's what pushed it over the edge for Rhaenyra. Had he married somebody else, right? Baby Beyonce or whatever. Had, he mar had her dad married somebody else, not her best friend. I think she was willing to try. As a matter of fact, she says it, right? She doesn't use it. She doesn't use those words, but she, she gives her approval. Dad, I understand. Do what you have to do. And then she feels betrayed by her father, and she most definitely feels betrayed by her best friend. So there, you can still see that in that scene that she's there's she has not gotten over it, and Allison's trying. Rhaenyra is not, and um, of course the one that that. The victim there between them two was obviously Rhaenyra. So she's the one that probably needs time. Maybe she's never going to forgive her. Yeah. Who knows? But it's not looking good. Yeah. So at this point, that's the relationship. It'll be interesting to see when that time jump happens, what the relationship turns into, if it'll improve or not. It, it's it's also going to be difficult for her, I think, to have a, a real and true relationship with her because mm -hmm. Otto is definitely not a proponent for her to rule or uh, for her interests. She, yep. she repeat, he repeatedly tells her and uh, Viserys that she'll do whatever you ask her to. Cause you're her King. Yeah. You know, but, but I think it'll be interesting to see how their relationship develops because she obviously would take her advice prior when they, when they had that scene and they were inside of the chapel or inside of the, the scepter. Yes. The sept. So um, um, it'll be interesting to see moving forward. Um, but, yeah, so then so next thing that happens the next thing that happens is that they decide to go on a hunting trip, right? In yeah. honor of of uh Aegon. Aegon's name day. Mm -hmm. Right. So there's this great scene where they're on their way mm -hmm. and then you, you have the camera set to where we're we're somebody inside we're inside of the carriage as well, right? Which yes. is kinda cool. Like we're involved in their conversation. They're going back and forth. And they're kind of just discussing how how uh, Rainier should start thinking about having kids herself and 
how Allison is pregnant with her other kid. Mm -hmm. And again, there is that kind of comparison to uh, Ama's birth and how that was so difficult. And Allison was kind of like, yeah, I mean, it's not that bad. It was pretty easy when he came out. It's mm -hmm. kind of just long, though. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I've, I, what, I got a couple of things from that ride. One, um, I felt that when Rhaenyra was, when Rhaenyra said, well, should she be traveling in this condition? I Because she, it's like they went over some bumps. And Allison, like I said, ah, just like, showed some sort of discomfort. But Rhaenyra noticed it and everybody else did too. But then I felt that Rhaenyra was, Sure, I don't like her, but I or or I'm mad at her, whatever it is. But I'm still concerned that you know I'm worried about it. This is this is probably not the safest thing for somebody that's so far along in her pregnancy. So I felt a little weird. I think there may be that's interesting to me because I got that she just didn't want to be around her. So she kind of said that as like, "Are you sure she should be coming along with us? Because like, should yeah. she be going to this hunting trip? Because she's." You know, yeah, she's pretty far along, but I didn't. I saw it as more of her not wanting to be oh, with all to of them of in proximity, oh, okay. as okay, opposed okay. to like genuine concern. Yeah. Um. But at the same time, I don't know if you noticed, but uh, throughout the episode and especially in the scene, she's sitting the on the opposite side of of the king, her brother. Yeah, she's practically Allison. just. She's pretty much the one uh, handling the horses up front. She <laughs> does much. not want to be in there. Get me out of here. It smells like somebody farted in this carriage. Yeah. I want out. And even after when they get off and they like go, they present, the, they present, you know, Aegon to all the people waiting at the, yeah. at the like, camping like ground. Simba. Yeah, yeah. Basically, basically it's Simba with a little, Simba. with a little tiny, uh, dragon figurine. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. Even then she doesn't get off. She kind of just chills there and listens to all the applause and all that. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't. It doesn't seem like she's interested in having a relationship with her uh, brother at all. She wants nothing to do with him. Well, as far as it, I'm concerned. But there's more to it than that. There's what she's noticing is that people are happy. People are happy that they're not going to have to. And maybe it's true. Maybe it's not. I don't know. Um, uh, people are are happy that she that they that have, they're an gonna heir have a king that they accept a king not a queen yeah yeah then and, and that oh thank god or like oof that was close we almost had a queen but if you yeah it, no i Can agree you imagine <laughs> almost had yeah. a queen and that's how like, yuck yeah i need a shower <laughs> but you just showered last month yeah uh, well i feel like i need to but uh, yeah you're right but then like uh if you think about Ama and how she was pregnant and how attentive Rhaenyra yeah. was choosing the dragon egg, making sure, you know, like just being more involved with this one. She just kind of is like, oh, it, she doesn't go to his name day thing. Yeah. She doesn't get out to applaud him. She doesn't present her. She just doesn't want to be there. She, I don't think she wants a relationship with him at this point. Maybe yeah. that'll change. But at this point, that's pretty much. I don't think she's showing any interest as far as we've seen. Yeah. But then we see a bigger problem, right? We see a problem for, for Viserys that there's some ladies talking at that place. Um, and they're talking um, with some worry, right? They're saying that they're talking about the, the, the conflict that that's currently going on. Just the local the, gossip, right? The local <laughs> gossip and uh, at the step zones. And they're talking about um, how th the king needs to do something. And David brought them into this war. Yeah, and, and now yeah. we have to do something. And we are at war because, you know, regrettably so, Damon brought everybody else into this, even though it's really not everybody yet, but it looks bad on the realm. And the, so we get a glimpse at what people or what the realm really thinks about the king. But then they also, they see Rhaenyra like passing by and it catches her ear, right? That they're talking about like her, how her father rules things and how they're talking about Damon. And, mm -hmm. and I don't know if you got this, but it seems like they also blamed her for, you know, like basically Damon started this war because he, he's not next in line because he, they named you heir. Yeah. So 
I mean, you know, and she kind of makes it clear, like, I haven't talked to my uncle in, in, in years. years since that happened. I have no communication with yeah. him. They're like, yeah, but you're the heir now, right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So it's kind of it's kind of interesting to to see how the realm blames her or there's people in the realm that blame her for this whole war that's happening on the side. Yeah. 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 You see you, women. <laughs> women. Yeah. Yeah, women are like, yeah, that's because of you. Yeah. You did this. You but were- that's, they're also saying things that their husbands are saying, right? They just gossip about it more. Yeah. Um, uh, but anyways, uh, I like that part because you you, you get a glimpse of, as, as to what everybody's thinking, right? Or the general cons- consensus of we need to do something. Yeah. What the fuck? Another right? part of that scene, like that, I really liked. Yeah, was that bougie ass pug? Oh yeah, <laughs> just eating. What was that? A meat pie? What the fuck? I don't know, that? but I think it's also kind of a symbol of a symbol of the decadence from the time, right? Because did you see his fucking bling that he had? <laughs> I mean, he like because it, if you think about the parallels between King's Landing and yeah. that rule back then they were all broke and stuff but obviously jaharis left viserys like this really wealthy realm the fact that dogs dogs had enough to eat you know well that dog you know well yeah but they had they zoom into like all these berries and all this stuff and like pomegranates and shit like that they zoom into all of that to just remind us that king's landing is wealthy at this point it's prosperous yes yes so it it was just interesting and i thought it was kind of like a funny cute scene to be like yeah well you know, even the pugs. I love my dogs very much, but if they eat my fucking muffin, <laughs> like just like that, I I don't know. I think I, I no, would. No, you would, would do nothing. They're ah. too cute. <laughs> okay, I don't know if I would do nothing, but I would. I would definitely yell more than that lady did. So let me prove my point here. I'm talking. Yeah, but then you see all the cute little crumbs. Okay, let's <laughs> let's move on. So yeah. we we then when you're at, uh, talk. You you can tell Rhaenyra finds out what her dad's trying to do when she speaks with Jason Lannister, right? That he Jason. Gets, yeah, which is kind of a weird it's name. It's like a lacrosse for, name. Yeah, I don't know, man. But uh, no offense to any Jasons out there. Uh, but uh, she finds out what her dad is is trying to do, and and it's not something I think he's doing out of spite. It's it's just something that comes with. Uh, the territory, like she's of age now, and she is of of the most important family in, in the kingdom. And obviously, there's going to be several bachelors with that come from noble homes that w- are going to want to tie their homes to the Targaryens by marriage. And she's finding now she got to the point where now she's faced with that issue, and um, you know. I think what she she felt that she was trying to get passed on, right? Okay, I'll be the head of Castle Rock, uh, and and then my brother is gonna be king. It, it was a it, yeah. it's a two thing it's a two part thing where she goes like, well, they want to marry me off to a fucking random stranger uh, that I don't really know, just because it comes from a noble family. And on top of it, they're doing that to go like, well, here you go, and then Aegon will be king. That's what I think she thinks. But anyways, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think that they're definitely trying to... She's thinking like, well, the intention is to for me to be a wife then, not a ruler. And yeah, at that point, I mean, she's already feeling like that, so you just stack up the odds. It's not like her father is having the conversation like, he yells at her that he's that he he's uh, drowning in parchments, right? In mm-hmm. letters asking for courtships, but he's not tell. Obviously, that's a surprise to her because yeah. all of a sudden she has this guy hitting on her, mm-hmm. and obviously, like um, Viserys knows about it because nobody's gonna nobody's gonna court <laughs> her without his consent at this point. Yeah. So it's like, I mean, can you imagine? Like you, how? Do- Okay, there's only a handful of real, of like a realistically people that would have a ch- shot at getting their letter even read by the king, right? Like, is just is this like Santa Claus just getting all kinds of mail? 
It, like any random fucking guy goes like, mm. well, to be honest, it's yeah. pro- it's probably like, uh, you know, all those like Instagram hotties. They mm-hmm. probably <laughs> get all oh, the. Getting- it's like their version their of dick DMs. Pics. Yeah, dick pics to the yeah, king. Yeah, being uh, like, hey, you like this dick because it's I'll marry you. Yeah, I'll marry you. Here's his yeah. like really veiny, triumphant <laughs> dick right here for you. And and his house is in the richest one in the realm, but I but think, it is the veiniest. But look, at, but it is the veiniest. Look at this dick pic. Yeah, no, it's but just sending all kinds of dick pics. But it's, and also maybe like like pictures of their of their horse right, <laughs> instead of their car. Yeah, and uh, I mean it's definitely like it's like a yes a medieval uh, inbox what, like what DMs. Would they, I what think. D, what kind of a DM pic would you think you they would send other than dick pic? We discussed that already. What would they send? to Rhaenyra to try to you know well Jamie was like ooh taste this honeyed wine it's the best in Lannisport blah, 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 cuz wine yeah. was obviously big right big then right yeah but you know what she she didn't even like it she made a face i don't know if you noticed right away she was like mm. yeah but she's, she's but she's polite so she didn't say anything and but she's she, also 17 yeah but and wait till you grow up a little you're going to like wine Okay, you swear like she's not has not drank wine. No, she probably people has, are getting but... married off at twelve years old. Also, by the way, the <laughs> the king had like what thirty eight glasses of wine, which is why we decided also, to go with yes, wine why, today. Yeah, in, in case you guys are wondering, in case you guys see us whining and grinding on, uh, on YouTube. Boo. Okay. <laughs> oh, cheers, baby. I'm sorry. Okay. Boop. Ah, uh, you're already cheers. Too late. Bye. <laughs> um. Anyway, so she doesn't want to get married. She definitely doesn't want to get married on her father's terms. She's very upset at him. But let's let's move on to the part where she storms off, and we got uh, the hottie, uh, Kristen hottie Cole. With the body. You know what's interesting? Follows her. Yes. <laughs> I saw a comment recently where they were saying the only hot person on this show so far is Kristen. Yeah. Oh. Duh. I wonder why. And I was like, I was like, to be honest, we're lucky we got him. I mean, think about if we're going with medieval yeah. times, we, the teeth alone. I commented that. But by also the way. just the downgrade from one series to another on hot nips. But it's more accurate. How? This is another realm. This isn't. It's the same it's realm. It's not Earth, baby. <laughs> I know, but I'm just saying like. It's if we're if they're taking off of if it's like this parallel universe where medieval times exist now, right? Yeah. People wouldn't be hot. There's no plastic surgery. There's no dental. There's no dental wear. But there's natural beauty. There is natural beauty, but there's no dentists that I've seen. I know, but the most people are ugly. But look, I'm just saying it's more, it's more accurate. I don't know. I'm is a- all. I'm just saying. But I am glad we got Sir Chris. Even the Red Co. Witch was somewhat hot. Uh, who else was hot? Well, uh, the Red Witch had Botox and stuff later. Oh, and witchcraft? Hello? Well, yeah. Yeah. Are she we, had that necklace that made I her I haven't hot. seen a lot of ladies with necklace. And Rhaenyra. <gasps> but I mean. <laughs> she has a necklace. Oh, Damon well, it's gave not her. working. Well, no, she's still. She's, she's fine, but she's no Daenerys in hotness level. It's more accurate. Okay. Daenerys didn't even go bald after she was in the fire. No. Well, so let's not get into that. Anyways, that was it. So she storms off. <laughs> Rhaenyra storms off, and then Kristen Cole uh, goes after Sir her. Sir Kristen Cole. Sir Kiss. Sir Kristen, Kristen Cole. Cole. Um. Uh. And storms after her. Storms off after her, and um. Let's fast forward to the Borg scene. Um. Boar. Boar, and she. Um, well, first they hear something, and then uh, then Kristen gets fucking tackled. Yeah, so they uh, storm off. They're around a campsite. Campsite. I think it's also important to mention that time has passed, right? Since he's elected her, elected him to be in the King's Guard. Yeah. So he's telling her how grateful he is. Like he, she's basically saying, like, I have no say. People don't take me seriously. Yeah. She, he. She's venting to him, and I think. This is one of the few times where we actually get um, an insight into Rhaenyra's like thought process because she doesn't have very many friends at this point. Yeah, Damon was her friend. Left. I mean, she can't really vent to Viserys, and then Alicent boned her dad, 
So, I yeah. mean, she doesn't really have that much going on. So I think this is one of the few moments where we actually get an insight into what she's thinking, where she's at. Gotcha, um, yeah. So. But then we see him, obviously, he gets hit by the by the boy. And then she, and then he, she, the, the boy attacks her. And then he kind of saves her. And then the boy's still alive. So then she just turns around and has her dagger and starts stabbing the shit out of the boy. But you see all this anger that she's just been yeah. holding in and it's pent up. And then she just, you know, rages out on the board, stabbing it over and over and over and over again. It all, it, you know, it's a little scary, but I felt that she needed it a little bit. It was kind of like, cathartic. Co- yeah, she's covered in blood. And I think there's a parallel towards the end, which mm-hmm. we'll talk about. Uh, Damon ends up covered in blood. Mm-hmm. So is she. Mm, and I think interesting. I didn't. I yeah. Didn't... Yeah. So I, and I was just thinking that's a parallel to where they're getting to a certain point in their um in their mindset where mm-hmm. where they're kind of deciding who they're going to be and who they're going to be, you know, yeah. Um, because even e- they both get assists in their battles because Kristen d- takes the first hit, the boar. We think she's dead, but then he revives and Rainier finishes him off, and that's where she gets into her rage. But he tells her before too, like you, you have made a difference. You do have power. You can get that power. You made me the king's guard, and I'm that you like. This is the highest my family's ever been. Yeah. And then you have, which we'll discuss a little bit later. You have um, Damon gets the assist from. Uh, what's Corliss's son's? Le- Leon, Leon, kings of kings of Leon. Kings. <laughs> no, Le- it's Le- something like Le- Leona or something. <laughs> yeah, Le- yeah, Leona Lewis. No, uh, but no, but yeah. So he, the, you get that support from that too. Yeah. So I just thought it was an interesting dichotomy to see where their characters are going, but I think that was intentional with the blood getting covered. I don't know if you caught that. But. No, I didn't actually. I, I, I felt that the last scene when when Damon's just out there and. Corliss is looking at him and he just they they kind of lock eyes and he's just covered in blood I felt that that was meaningful but I didn't put it together with um with the parallel with Rhaenyra Uh so but anyways that happens she goes back to the camp but before all of that there's a very important scene I think that that same night um the king Viserys is is you know, getting drunk with wine, uh, as Ooh. are we. <laughs> and um, she, uh, Allison goes out to see him, and and he starts telling her these things that are, I, I, I think this is very important. Actually, he starts saying that many in his line, in his bloodline, have been able to be dragon riders. That's normal for Targaryens, right? Or not uncommon but not many have been dreamers right in the sense that Aegon according to him on the first episode he tells Rhaenyra that he had a dream about what we now know is the Night King and White Walkers and what the danger of that right and before that on that on our first episode discussing that I mentioned how the Targaryens ended up in Westeros because of a dream. Well, yeah, it's fairly common for them to have. Uh, well, not common, but it's it's a part of their lore mm-hmm. that dragon dreams are had in their predictions, not mm-hmm. necessarily always for something good, but their predictions of the foresight for the future, right? Yeah, so he was. He starts telling Alicent that he had dreams of. Of a, of a king wherein hit the conqueror's throne, which is Aegon's uh, um, throne, uh, crown, I meant, and which is Aegon's crown, and and he was certain of it, right? That 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 king was his son, and he admits that that dream became an obsession, which led his his wife to just having all those mis- miscarriages and also. Ultimately, her death. Because that dream, it's a weird thing that it's like a paradox, right? If he doesn't have that dream, maybe he doesn't become obsessed about having a boy. And if he doesn't become obsessed about having a boy, he doesn't just keep putting his uh, wife in that situation. 
she might still be alive. All of these things. Potentially. But then what he didn't realize is maybe he if had he, he needed to have that dream to essentially lead to his current wife, well, his ex-wife's death to end up remarrying. And that's how he has the son that he was thinking about. So I just started thinking about all this like, all this weird stuff that that dream caused or those dreams caused, I should well, say. I definitely think, I mean, they kind of, Reascertain, and in this episode specifically yeah. i think um he's battling with himself and between his superstition because uh, i think you're right he he iterates to us how he that that dream mm -hmm. and his thought that he is uh, he has had dragon dreams and he is this is a foresight and this is a prediction for the future and it's not just a dream he had because I think he wrestles with the idea of him being able to him having that future prediction because he never had another dream again. He says that's what's kind of driven him. Mm. So he wrestles with that being just a dream and with yeah. that being a prediction. But I think it was in line with the fact that. I mean, who doesn't want a male heir? Mm -hmm. So I think it's in it's in line with what the norm is. Mm -hmm. So he kind of he's thinking, am I am I having dragon dreams? Is that a true prediction? Am I a dream, a magical dreamer? Like, is that what it is? Or have I just obsessed? Am I just being superstitious? Have I obsessed over that? Because I think he feels like Rhaenyra would be a good queen. And I think that's why he chose her other than to spite Damon. Right. Mm -hmm. But I also think he is wrestling with what he thinks is right and what his dragon dream predicted would be right so i think when the, like uh i think something that's important to mention is that there is a stag that everybody they're basically they're on this hunting trip and there's like they found this white stag which is in celtic lore and in this universe as well there uh it's it's a big omen for uh, prosperity so at this point he's he's thinking Okay, well, because it's a crazy rare sighting and it's on Aegon Zame Day, that has to reaffirm the fact that my dream is correct. My like, it's just another superstitious belief that coincides with Aegon being, being like the true leader that should be taking the crown mm -hmm. in order to maybe avoid that prophecy. Because the whole point is to have a Targaryen at the throne. Yeah. So. Well, also, let's, I know this is going back, but Otto made the proposition of perhaps, um, you know, you should marry off Aegon with Rhaenyra. And he's like, he's fucking too, Otto. And then yeah. in my head, I'm like, yeah, but how old is Alicent? I mean, also, you didn't want to marry the, that other lady. So, I but mean. But it's different, though. Yeah. I, because of the time clock. It, oh, by the way. We don't know. This isn't Earth. It's not our world. So who knows? Maybe later. But it was also odd for him. So it doesn't. Mm -hmm. That doesn't matter. Otto was saying, no, maybe she's too young for you. But now he's like, well, a baby, though. Sounds good yeah. for Rhaenyra. Yeah. Good so, point. It, I mean, it doesn't matter. He's going to he's going to appease to whatever he wants to do. But I think it it is important. To what me. did you think about the, the white stag that does appear? And it appears. Um, and, and Rhaenyra is the one that sees it. Yeah, I mean, to okay, so at that part, I was just thinking about, um, obviously, I think that was a sign for the viewers. Let us know that she's probably the one that should be taking the throne. Had she come back with that, Aegon would not have had a doubt in his mind. Yeah, She should be at the throne. And then it would have been uh, maybe reaffirming other people's idea of her. Mm -hmm. Because they were impressed you brought back the boar, but had they brought back the white stag they thought they were going to catch. Yeah. I mean, who knows? For a superstitious dude like Viserys, that would have been absolutely that would have like sealed the deal, but I also think it's telling of cuz uh Kristen Cole had he had like a he had a good shot. He could have shot him, they could have taken him back. Mm. She said, "No, hold back." So I think that's telling to her character to where she can defend herself with the boar that attacked her. But with, I mean, she doesn't have to kill if she doesn't need to. Or she chooses not to at certain times. Because it's not like the 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 stag wasn't a threat to her. Mm. So I think it's telling of her character as a leader 
to make those choices, but not, but to not be afraid. Yeah, I don't know. To be on the outside. But I thought it was um, also interesting that we know that in the future, it's a stag, the stag family yeah. that, that boots him off the, off the throne, which I thought was a, an interesting, I was like, oh, they're going to get the revenge. This stag in a way. Yeah, the bro- whole Baratheon thing. Yeah, it's going to, they're going to get the revenge. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, uh, then we go back to King's Landing and we see that, well, she gets back to camp and all of that. And, but then we go back to King's Landing and there's a couple of um, scenes where we have um, Otto meets Alicent and he's trying to, um, he's trying to, well, he tells her to try to get the king to see that Aegon is gonna it is the one that should be the heir because he he he's the one that's a male uh and you know that's the tradition that's how it goes it'd be going against the gods to yeah. do otherwise and you see that Allison's going it, she's she's troubled by this because she honestly feels that Rhaenyra would be a good ruler that and also what kind of a son would I have if he goes against his sister uh, what am I doing there? You mm-hmm. know, and she says that, but at the end of the day, she she shows that she's willing to listen to her father. And Rhaenyra's not so much, right? But Allison, which is why um, sometimes Otto goes like, "Well, you're the king." She, you know, she'll yeah. have she has because his daughter did listen well, to him. At this point, we don't really know if she's gonna be listening to her father yeah. in that sense, or if she's going to like grow a backbone and wield her power as queen because she's already there yeah she doesn't really need to listen to her dad anymore but i guess we'll see as she once the time once the time jump enters i'm curious to know how Otto and her relationship considers like will she rebel against him or will it continue to be like puppeteering or have influence have influence and to a big degree you know who knows but i don't know but what what we we do see yeah is uh, when Alicent and Viserys go back to go to their go back to their quarters and they're discussing the stepstones and a letter that they receive and they're asking for aid, mm-hmm. right? They're asking for aid out at the stepstones and Viserys is just mad. He doesn't want to give he doesn't want to give his brother help yeah. or Corliss, right? Because they both pretty much went forward and did whatever they wanted, anyways. Mm-hmm. And then. You see, Alicent does have an influence over, over Viserys, and a positive influence, I would think. He's like, well, they're asking for help. I mean, what sounds better to end the war that everybody wants over, or to just kind of continue to be spiteful to your brother? Well, she she put it in a different way too. Like she's like, look, man, I'll make it simple. Is it better for the realm? If the crab eater crab feeders prevail, or if they're defeated, you know that's as simple as you can make that question. And he couldn't argue with her. No. He didn't argue with. He he kind of he was he's he's very much a person that acts on emotion, right? Yeah. So I mean, the whole Damon situation, Rhaenyra situation. He acts on emotion as opposed to using his logic. And I yeah. think because we notice there, I mean. They kind of show a shot where they're showing that he's now lost his fingers where they were trying to save the skin with yes. the maggots. If you guys didn't catch it, it's in that scene when he's talking to Allison. He's sipping he out of a like, little, little glass. Yeah. <laughs> and you see he raises his left hand and then now he's missing two fingers. When, you know, Which we've uh, seen earlier he was trying to cure. Yeah. Um, but I think that's important to show that as, as we progress in the story... His body is deteriorating along with his rule. Imagine he just ends up with the thor- just his torso, uh, yeah, like in, in <laughs> like a wheelchair. So, yeah, so yeah. it's like so. I think that's telling. I think we'll start to see his decay as his rule decays yeah. as well. You know. So then he we we can tell that he convinced she convinces him, convinces the king to then um, assist. With the with the fighting at the stepstones, and he writes a letter. They send it off uh, to uh, Damon, but before that, he then he has 
a chat with Rhaenyra and where he, uh, they kind of start hatching things out. And also, by the way, Allison convinced them to, well, let her make her think that she's making her own choice about her, <clears throat> her, um, betrothed, right? Who she's going to marry. Let just let her think that she, I don't know if he's letting her think it or. Well, they didn't, he, he tells her, he levels with her and tells her, I married for love as well. Like, I loved your mother. That was great. Yeah. But, I mean, that was chosen, though. It was chosen, but ultimately he loved her. And I think that's something he cherished. Yeah. And he wanted that for her. And I think they kind of leveled with each other. And he showed her a sign of respect by telling her, you choose. Yeah. Like, we, this is something we have to do anyways. It's an yeah. obligation. You choose. And... I'm also going to, I had doubts. I'm not going to lie to you and tell you I didn't when I had my son, but I'm going to reaffirm my decision in you. Yeah. You will continue to be the heir. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise and don't worry about that aspect. So she leaves a little happy that her father has acknowledged that this is a problem. This is an issue. This is something that she's obviously thought about mm -hmm. like, and that he's give she's he's giving her enough of the respect to at least choose her suitor, so I think at this point they are both leaving off on better terms. Yeah, and then we obviously we transition into the next scene, right? Uh, yeah, where where the messenger arrives at the stepstones and and pro gives the message to uh, Damon, in which he's telling him that he's gonna send. Um, some ships, a couple of thousand men, um, et cetera, et cetera, to assist with this battle, and and that he hopes that they can make it, and and win. However, and you see, <laughs> Damon's Damon. reaction is not a yep. good one, and the reason for that I got is that because if they were to act now, it it what the realm would say is that he couldn't do it until the king decided to help well, he, and it just takes the victory right under his fucking it's feet right also so, his ego right he doesn't it's all ego it's like it's been three years yeah. and his brother hasn't stepped in yeah so he he's obviously they deliver the letter he beats the shit out of this messenger mm -hmm. beats the shit i think that's him being mad at his brother too just not not just because of the glory that you know if the king came in and helped then it was the king that's the savior mm -hmm. but also because i think he's he doesn't want he just doesn't want his brother's involvement at all he's mm -hmm. barely acknowledging his shit now yeah and that's because it's not because his brother asked for it it's because like corliss's family asked yeah, that's the thing. And uh, that's what I didn't understand about the guy talking shit about Damon. I was like, Damon was in Dragonstone, minding his own business. They called upon him to help with this thing. And and, and he's coming back from flying his dragon and and putting his life at risk. Every We saw what happened at the beginning of the episode. He got shot with... It's not like... Oh, I'm 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 on a dragon. I'm fucking yeah, but just because, super safe here. Just because no. you put yourself in danger doesn't mean you're winning. They haven't been winning, and that's no. The I didn't point. say they were winning. I'm just saying that the guy sounded like, like fuck this guy. Like I was like he, you guys called him. But I also think it's because Damon. It seems like Damon's been going out without strategy, just using his dragons and burning shit up, and that's not working. And that, his solution yeah. is to continue going out there, burning yeah. the shit up. And without without a true plan, I'm it's a uh, Corliss's son, which I need to learn his name. Yeah. Something. Blah, blah, blah. It's a uh, lean. Oh yeah, you're right. Whatever. Yeah. So he's the one that comes up with the plan. Yeah. And okay, so the plan is we set somebody up as bait. Who's crazy enough to do that, Damon? Okay, and it was fucking Damon. You think he's surrendering? I didn't really think that, by the way, and I don't think anybody did, but. We get the first uh, glance of like a a, a real, uh, and he may have not done it had he not received that letter. No, at that point he doesn't give a shit. He yeah, just he won't. lost all hope, or like, well, not hope, but he lost. No, he's just he's just. What do I have? Nothing to lose. He, yeah, nothing to lose. He's mad. He just wants to go out there, and he's like, "Yeah, dude, I'll fucking do this. And if I don't do this, whatever." Yeah, 
I'll, I'll die, whatever. Whatever. So he takes his chances, and then you, you see him just epically kick ass. He does... He does really well, right? It's a very good scene. It's like it's, a, almost like a single shot scene where we're following behind his back while he's just slashing yeah. through, and then dodging got, arrows. And then he gets surrounded. And then just when you think all hope is lost. He does trip up. He gets shot up. Like like the episode when they go beyond the wall and to capture a um, a walker, which I thought that was the stupidest fucking idea oh, yeah. ever because you could have killed somebody that, you know, anybody that's a, a criminal and fucking put him in a cage, kill them beyond the wall, wait for him to turn, and then bring him back. Thank you. That group wasn't all that smart either. Yeah. So, anyways, um, in that scene, it reminded me of that, where, like, he's they're surrounded, he was surrounded, and all of a sudden, fire saves his ass, and it's Corliss's kid. We'll learn his name. The assist the next comes one. in, yeah. The assist comes in, and it's just fucking... It was his plan, by the way. Yeah. And it was it was a good plan, and it obviously worked. And then you see him see the Crab King, right? The and then he goes after him. And I don't know what I, I expected something to be seen. I was gonna say, but did I it wasn't upset? Did it just, bother you that no, we didn't see a fight scene between? No, because you see something equally fucking cool. You're like the mystery of it. He just you see the shot of the camera, and he's walking, and he just <laughs> dragging half of the body only yeah. by with one hand like you're crossing your little kid uh you're crossing the street with your little kid but it's just the you know it was such a good shot and then he just takes him out and i do have another question for you yes did it concern you at all that he has grayscale oh i see because does he have gloves though or his armor if he does, I don't think so because remember he offers up Dark Sister and stuff. He doesn't really have that much armor on him. Oh, so I think I don't. That was just something I thought about. I don't know if that'll come into play in the future or anything. <laughs> I don't know if he I touched. I didn't even think about it. I don't know if he touched him before he died. I don't know if you can get well, grayscale. He's definitely from, touching him. Uh, well, yes, but I don't know if you can get grayscale from court uh, from a post mortem. Corpse. Yeah, I don't know. So uh, that's just yeah. something I thought if there's about. There's any doctors out there that know about grayscale? Any Westerosi yeah, doctors yeah. out yeah. there? Or, or, um, or um, uh, the Maesters. Oh yeah. We got any Maesters out there? I don't know if I trust them though. Yeah, well, baby, you know, they know their shit. I don't. Yeah. Westerosi shit. Yeah, but they're okay. So this story is supposed to be written by Maesters, but it's like very much like the Bible stuff, right? You never know who wrote what. But in either case, yeah. So, um, yeah. So I was just thinking about the grayscale, and I'm like, is that going to come into play, or is it just null after they're dead, or is it not? A, am I overthinking things? <laughs> yeah. Like, am I looking too far into it? Well, I didn't even think about it, but now if if I watch that episode again, I want to be like, oh, dude. Go fucking sanitize your Well, hands. and did anybody else have grayscale? I'm not sure. I know the ones at the top didn't, but what about the ones at the bottom? Like the ones throwing the arrows didn't have grayscale, those pirates, but yeah. I don't know if anybody other than, yeah, you know. But anyways, and that's how the, the episode ends. And then we get a quick glance at the next episode, right? He comes back. He has a, he has a haircut now. Yeah. Right? He went to Fantastic Sam's uh, or yeah. Supercuts. And he got a haircut. And now he's and a king. And then he, he's a king now. King of the narrow sea, right? Is that something like that. And uh, we see that there's going to be some sort of rumors being uh, spread. I think it's about right near up. We're not sure yeah, if it's... they implied it in the preview. And there's more conflict, I think. Yeah. Because we saw fire. They, she's on know. a ship now. I I mean, I don't know if it's going to time jump because I thought maybe mm -hmm. <laughs> this, this. the back of her head saved <laughs> told her. Yeah. But the, again, I might be speculating. So yeah, I don't know. It, it'll be interesting to see where we get next. Next episode. Yeah. The, the, I'm just I'm loving the fact that the, this particular series is it just like went straight into the conflict. It's the like action. we went in the middle like we knew them already. They gave yeah. us the prequel. Yeah. That's it. But yeah. So, so I'm excited for next um I'm excited for next week. Um, yeah, me too. I'm excited every fucking week. Every Sunday I'm like, what the fuck, man? I wish it was Sunday again. Uh not just for that, you know. Uh but anyways, uh that's all the time we have. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. I hope you guys tune in next week. Uh also don't forget before to before we sign off, yes. I do think we have another shot 
left over because I accidentally or intentionally put in another shot. So if you want to take it before we close off. Okay, I'll take it. Okay, oh. I wasn't sure. Let me take out. My and while you do that, I'll just uh, don't forget, guys, hit the like button, subscribe. We're also on every platform if you just want to listen to us uh, and listen to us again or whatever. And don't forget to uh, share the podcast. So send it to a friend. Send it to anybody that is uh, somebody that loves Game of Thrones and you think might be interested in listening listening to our podcast. Well, oh, she's really pouring another shot. All right, here we go. Uh, anyways, this is for you guys and for baby Aegon. How do we feel about Aegon? Um, I feel to like, be determined, right? Yeah, TBD. Yeah, okay. Here you go. All right. The second of his name. Woo! Episode three. 